Good afternoon. Uh, I don't think I ever managed to give a speech in the afternoon just after lunch and not having somebody in the audience fall asleep. Uh, Eric promised me he will do that this afternoon. Uh, if it happens to you, don't worry. It's uh, absolutely normal. It often happens. It often happens to me as well. Not while I'm speaking so far, but <laughs> may come with age. Uh, a G E, please. Uh, one of the first things I've learned as a consultant uh, many, many years ago uh, was the customer's perception about consultants was if you can't do it, teach it. And if you can't teach it, become a consultant. Uh, early in this morning, Lawrence gave me another similar expression saying about sales, marketing, and uh, human resources. Sorry, Ivan. Uh, What do you think, if you look carefully, what happened to this company for the last 12, 13 years? What do you think uh, we've done as an organization that uh, proved that this do, teach, and consult uh, rule uh, uh, cannot apply to us? That's the sort of thing you find out that uh, we've done extremely well, like Kennedy demonstrated earlier, which means that uh, it's probably the first company I've seen myself where consultants deliver and can uh, prove that they can do things and the customers like that. So uh, I'm not going to pretend I will, that I talk to you about quality in terms of I know quality better than you do and I'm going to teach you that, far from. Uh, because what I forgot to say is, if you can't consult, then you become a manager. <laughs> uh, what I'm trying to say in the next uh, 30 minutes or 28 minutes probably, is that uh, in the team that David put together, uh, Kennedy, Tom and myself, uh, we are having a brief that says, uh, we will have to ensure that this successful company uh, sustains growth with the same success. Uh, and uh, we make sure as we grow bigger and our customers expect more global approach from us, that we can meet their expectations. So one of the things I will be doing is um, share with you some observations on the things that uh, I think made us successful in the past and uh, try together to draw some conclusions about our future. I will try to give you some indications of what will be possible actions you might expect from our management team uh, to ensure that we can sustain growth into the next conference of five, six hundred people and still have a, and share the common culture. I said earlier, the secret of our success is uh, the team of consultants we put out there. Uh, we found out that the very successful consultants we've seen were those who uh, sensed that responsibility, the responsibility to deliver a quality solution to the customer. They are on the front line, and they're the only ones who can guarantee the success. We as a management team support function salespeople who are staying behind that. They make it happen. And uh, a number of speakers this morning has presented what quality is as far as customer is concerned. And you can see it once more repeated to you. It's probably one of our brainwashing techniques we use, as I may repeat the same things over all over again. Again, that in my perception is the uh, provision, if you want, the meeting the customer requirements, providing solutions we, um, which fulfill the specifications, being available in time, and uh, costing less than the perceived value of the solution, is the key to success. The consultants carry this responsibility. 
and they've proven it in the past that they can do it very well in a company like ours. On the other side, uh, consultants are employees of this organization. And uh, uh, what we always expect them to do is to think commercially. Uh, people say, yeah, for selling, we have salesmen. We found out that the most important the most important uh, consultants, the most successful consultants in the past, uh, when they decided to make more money, they moved into the sales department. And uh, we see this happening all the, all the time. So what we mean by thinking commercially is that consultants are the best place to create add-on business. If they serve the customer right, if the customer is satisfied, then he can be honored. Many times we've seen that happening, to serve as a reference site, to give us more business. Uh, and by doing so, consultants can maintain high contribution. High contribution means uh, produce money for the company, which are the result of multiplying the billing rate, the money the customer pays per day for the number of days the consultant works on assignment. Now, if you divide that by the total cost of the consultant, you get a ratio. And in the last years, we've proven that we have very, very profitable ratios. And one of the challenges we have today is to sustain that success. Let's spend a couple of minutes to see how this company has grown in the last 12 years. We have witnessed a typical scenario we see in other small entrepreneurial uh, companies. Uh, we had a number of people out there in the early days. We called them country managers. They were country managers with uh, themselves as the sole employee of the company, often in the beginning. But they all said a number of cultural elements that were common to all of us in the early days. And they said the basic instinct of an animal. Take it as you like. We were animals out there. <laughs> you don't believe me, ask Carl. <laughs> What was the result of having people like that is that they believed in what they were doing and they created the success by recruiting people who were better than themselves. And they had more animals joining the zoo. <laughs> and we done consistently that one and we went further. And we started, we created city-states like the Middle Ages. And we had good time, you know, teasing each other, selling each other's territory stuff. But that was fun. As long as we were small, that was OK. That was the, the prime, if you want, the prime formula for success. That was an unconditional independence of the country manager. He was the king. But Karl was the Kaiser. But <laughs> and Clive I was the Roman emperor. I was squeezed like a sausage in between those two. <laughs> but, you know, hot dog with a lot of mustard things. But it was fun. Still now, by going into the future, growing better, better bigger, and becoming a company where the Ovum Report, IDC, and all those will tell you where the market leaders, that we create some expectations from, especially multinational companies. And what the challenge is, I hope I'm still, yeah, that's right, I'm still on the same side. Uh, the challenge is to create a success that's independent of situations, being uh, people involved, the time, the activity takes place, uh, the results should be consistent. We don't want customers to tell us like it happened at Zurich Insurance 
yes, those UK customers are more satisfied than us because the consultants in the UK are better. Um, in that particular situation, I will tell you what happened. The UK customers are also more consultant consultancy minded, while the Swiss will be a bit different as far as this is concerned. But still, it doesn't take away that the UK company was much more mature and could play the game of consultant better. Uh, again, the lesson we have to draw, how can we learn from successful operations and export that success into other operations? To summarize, the requirements we've seen were simple. We need consultants to think commercially, and they do so far, and we need the new ones who just joined us to take the example of the, of the, of the past and go further. We need them to think commercially, to create opportunities for the company. We need them to think consistently. Uh, we don't need to go away from the animal instinct, because I think we still need entrepreneurship in the company. But we need some coherence, if you want. We need to pre preserve that instinct. Uh, for, for the sake of passing you something else, which I think is extremely important in a consultant's life, I, I thought of giving you this riddle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Benny Hanna. That's Benny Hanna. Is this the correct pronunciation, Carlson? Oh. Arigato, Carl son. Arigato. Carl, two days ago, gave me a number of exercises to walk out and walk on. Uh, because unless I pass that, he won't give me a job in Tokyo, he said. So, Benny Hanna, American Hospital in Paris, Mercedes Benz, McKinsey Consultants, the business school in Harvard. These are five companies which form a group of four and one, which is the strange duck. I don't know if this is the right English translation. We use it in Dutch anyway. <laughs> uh, Han is the rest of those typical Japanese steakhouses where they cover you with big clothes, you know, all over the place to protect your clothes with funny inscriptions like, I love my emperor or I love sushi, sort of thing. And uh, you stick around a big table, cooking plate, and people prepare food in front of you. The Dutch colleagues know that from the Kura Hotel, probably. Um, American Hospital in Paris is a hospital. <laughs> but it's a hospital for the richest and the best. We, common mortals, are allowed to die outside the place. <laughs> Mercedes-Benz. McKinsey Consultants, you know those, Harvard Business School. Uh, you have to solve that riddle, and you have to uh, give you to give the answer on this Q and A thing, uh, because we also collect the answers outside when you come out. No, it's just kidding. <laughs> the common element, because you can find groupings as you like, but the common element, one grouping I like, is the, that one of visibility. Visibility in the production process. And I'll go further to explain to you what it is. Every single company, with the exception of Mercedes-Benz, had one characteristic, visibility during the production process. Mercedes-Benz, you order the car, you can still demand it's not assembled on a Monday. Okay? That's the only thing you can do about the production process, and you can still believe them while there are small sheets of paper testifying that it's not done on a Monday. But the rest of them, the customers, the consumers, the users, now it's, it's funny to call yourself a customer of a hospital, but still customer, uh, those ones participate in the production process, if they survive, at least in a hospital. <laughs> but you see that in, sits, in such a situation, those who, from the point of view supplier, those who perform the production process are so visible 
So there is a very, very difficult, uh, or it's not difficult, it's a very challenging situation consultants, our consultants and all consultants of the world are living into, is the fact that whatever they do is somebody watching them. Okay? It's like the big brother. And uh, given that most consultants of other consultancy companies don't deliver, first time we come in a job, an assignment, they are very suspicious. They count the minutes we spent in the toilet. Or, you know, two minutes late, cost me two dollars. That sort of thing. Uh, you start laughing, you're not allowed to laugh sometimes. You have to be serious all the time, you have to be an android. They used to call Andersons those, but I think every consultant in the first assignment has to gain confidence. That's visibility. Now, you might think that's challenging or that's negative. Well, I can tell you that's the best thing you can have because it gives you one big opportunity. People observe you and that's your big opportunity to perform well and gain their confidence and they will trust you. They don't bother about how many million dollars you cost per day or Leader, probably not dollars. Not big <laughs> so the billing rate pressure, if you want, the billing rate pressure uh, is an opportunity. Really, I would think that our competitors, <coughs> like ourselves, often would give the right our right arm, so their right arm, in order to be able to sit in a position that we are. We're there and they pay us per day and we can perform well and you can sell the next job. They have to make appointments and many times to be turned down. So that's one of the most strategic opportunities for our commercially thinking consultants to get the job done and get more business. And that's what we expect them to do and that's what we observe uh, the consultants of the early days until today have done very, very well in this company and made this company big and provided the money. So what we find out when we observe a consultant at work, a JMA consultant or TIE consultant, I'm sorry for using the old names here. We've been through two company colors, three names in three years' time. But it was fun anyway. It gives us more challenge to maintain image. We learn to do marketing. And uh, we found out there are four things successful consultants in our company have managed well. Is the quality of the process, how they do the know-how transfer, is the quality of the deliverables, not only the intrinsic quality, but it's the, the uh, form also, the way you present your results, the way you do presentations. The general behavior, the motivation you uh, project, and how do you manage time? And one more thing that I think Kennedy has repeated 20 times and, and previous speakers as well, was that the quality is perceived quality. It's not absolute. Uh, the customer doesn't care whether you've achieved fifth in normal form on your data model or uh, you turn an attribute into an entity type with another 20 attributes of thing. They don't care about that. They care about availability, about something which is tangible and practical. And we think again that if you observe some good works, some good reference sites, I think that consults, our consultants have managed much better than others. We have one advantage. We have a product which supports us. So we don't need to spend more time than necessary just to squeeze some more money out of the customer. We just use our time in a very intelligent way, and we perform well, and we produce the results the customer is paying for. So, what's the challenge for us on a management team? How do you make sure this continues in the future in a consistent way? It's uh, very simple. Uh, we need to create the environment on our level the environment where consultants can be well-skilled, can have the right motivation, and acquire the culture. And in other words, the bottom line of it is, for us, which is extremely difficult, is to manage a team of professionals. That's it. 
don't upload yet, I'm not finished. So, let's come to some practical aspects of our jobs today and tomorrow. First thing we have to do is develop the ground rules. Oh, Christ. Then I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You see, Alex is the best guy you can find in the world. I'd rather applaud for Alex after my speech than myself. Uh, develop the ground rules. When we started up the operation, uh, we had some slogans. Uh, some of them are like ground rules. Uh, some of you remember the uh, famous one of the old bull and the young bull. Some people know that yet. Can you raise hands? No, many, so I have to say that. Uh, those sort of how do you go about customers? How do you approach customers? And the young bull and an old bull sitting on the top of the hill, watching a group of cows downhill. And the young bull says, let's go and get them. Let's go and quote, unquote, milk them. This censorship here. Uh, and the old bull, he said, don't bother. He said, we go down slowly, and we milk them one by one. <laughs> We had some young bulls starting up the French operation before Didier Navé came. Didier Navé was much younger, of course, but he was an old bull. <laughs> and we had that, those cases in other places as well. And those are the ground rules I'm talking about, about recruitment. You always recruit somebody better than yourself. Uh, you always have the recruitment test. Someone called that pass, the smell test. Does it smell right, the guy? And the smell test, according to the early people in this company, was do, not, do I want to work for him, for her, or so would I like him to be my boss, or because it may happen, speak from experience. <laughs> <laughs> or would I like to show him or her to my family? Or would I buy from him or her? These are so funny rules, if you want. But created the culture. I would like some of it. In a recent brainstorming session we had in Paris with my managers, it was more storm than brains, I would think. But uh, <laughs> I heard some people say, why don't we go back to some of those? Because they think it can help us. Now, uh, the trick is, I think in the meantime, we discovered many other rules of that sort, which remain informal and, and not well known. So why don't we go back and find those rules? And it uh, could be funny from time to time, could be you know, quite clever in other times. And I think we can benefit a lot of having that common culture emerge from simple things. Second thing we do is, once you find out what the rules of the game are, you're trying to implement norms. A norm is something, in my definition, I had some debates with some UK colleagues about that. But I'm sorry, it's just only my fourth language, this one. Uh, <coughs> boasting a bit. Uh, the norm is something simple. And I give you an example. And I want to make the distinction between a norm and a detailed procedure. Uh, if you remember, if you were in high school and uh, the teacher gave you a problem in mathematics, and normally it would take you two hours, three hours to solve it, and you come back with, to him within 10 minutes, give him the right answer. Oh, you get high marks, okay? Uh, praise you, genius, high IQ, all that. Suppose now your manager sends you to an assignment. And he planned that, proposed that, with blood, sweat, and tears, and negotiated that and everything, huh? uh, and got approved for five days, said to say. You go back to him and say, well, fix it. Three hours. We just have half a day, and that's it. What do you expect the manager to tell you? 
Well, in England, they are very subtle about that. I might tell you, well, I think it's quite, I think, not, not I'm sure, but I think it's quite inappropriate for you to act this way. Well, I would appreciate it if next time you do such and such. <laughs> <laughs> now, in France, they would tell you, you stupid ass. Get the hell out of here. And probably Schussler would tell you, it's a more cheese. This, I think, I had the ones that they used to kill people with cheese in Switzerland. <laughs> Whatever they say, people will call you names because they'll tell you about how come. Uh, that's a sort of debate we often have. And if we want to make sure that this isn't, doesn't happen, we have to develop a norm or a procedure. I prefer the norm because the norm will tell you a sensible consultant who is planned for a number of days on assignment is to do his best to perform these days because it provides contribution and blah, 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 blah. Okay? Now, a procedure will tell you for every consultant has done three days less per month, those planned by his manager for two consecutive mo uh, months, he gets a warning. Now, in some countries, Two warnings makes, you know, find another job, ticket to ride. So that's what I'm trying to tell you now. It's not, we're not implementing any uh, detailed audit procedures because we want to protect the uh, initiative. We want to protect this entrepreneurial animal instinct. Those animals don't work with procedures, we know that. I was one of them. And uh, I would hate people do that to me. So I'm not going to do it to somebody else. But on the other side, I have to respect some rules of game, rules of thumb, simple things, cultural things. And I think that our team are extremely committed to make that happen. And another thing that people probably would blame us and they're right is the continuously developed skills. Training is not optional, gentlemen and ladies. I'm being chauvinist now come from Greece. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry. Uh, I will tell you that there is no the choice of a country manager, or consultancy manager, any manager to say, well, I think uh, people should not attend that or should study on the weekends, which at least I've done a lot. Not study, but made people study on weekends. <laughs> then the skills, if you look at the products, the people, and the ones that Keith is bringing up in the marketplace, it's, it, gets, it blows your, your mind up. You have to give time to people to study, you have to make sure they do it. And you test they do it. And we have also, because in the man management cycle of things, there's always a stage which is called control. We have to find out, find mechanisms, find ways that we ensure that uh, shortcomings uh, and quality is being identified, quality shortcomings are being identified properly and uh, things are happening and continuously improve the process. Tell Alex I'm colorblind. <laughs> there are three colors up here and depending on what color it goes you have to go out of here. I just finished Alex. Thank you. Uh, to finish up, we need to provide um, all the necessary elements that a consultant, an employee working for this company, looks in the future and sees a career that makes sense to him. I don't think we've done it well. And we've been through changes and things, and uh, we have lots of excuses, but I think that's something we definitely need to, to fix. And then, uh, we want to make this company a place that people like to work for. And uh, we see that some of it happening already. We've seen people that uh, they will do the best, they will leave the other job, even for less money, to just to come to work for us. So, in summary, you will see some of these things, initiatives happening. How they will happen, probably identifying on the field groups of skilled people that perform very well. We know that them, we know them, and done very well in the past, and collect them, assemble them into quality teams, and ask them to 
them to define the norms and them to find ways of implementing them. Uh, we don't prevent, neither Kennedy, nor Tom, nor myself, that we know it all. We have to learn from you. We can always be successful if you help us. It's not something you read in books. We're people's business, and it's you people you're going to make it again. Well, thanks very much. Enjoy your movies. <laughs>